demon even enough. Let's begin. Okay, welcome all. Thanks for coming. Um, I wanted to show you off Unity for OpenSUSE. Um, so first, let's see. Um, I want to introduce myself and why I port Unity to OpenSUSE. Um, I'm Widen. Um, in daytime, I work as an engineer in a big IT company, but I'm using Linux since already 10 years. Um, at the moment, I was not satisfied with the desktop situation in Linux and in OpenSUSE because I saw some very things I don't like in GNOME Shell and in KDE. And uh, Unity should be available in any case, even for some users who like it and who only stays with Ubuntu because of Unity and the software center, of course. Um, so why OBS? Because we have um, ported also Unity to Fedora. You may have noticed this in the news already. Um, OBS is very, a very great tool um, which made it possible for us to launch packages of OpenSUSE factory and from other projects inside of OBS and to import Fedora packages for this. Um, the Unity packages, the important ones are the upstream packages. We have there the Utouch framework, Nux, Compass, and Unity, which are for the graphic rendering, the indicators, and the BAMF stuff. Of course, we have the overlay scrubber, and we have some uh, KDE and GNOME packages, which in, uh, covers features of Unity into KDE and GNOME. So we have still, you may have heard of it, packages who require patches from standard open source packages. This includes GTK2 and GTK3 for the app menu indicator, and also a bunch of GNOME packages like the control center, the settings daemon, the menus, and the network manager. Uh, we also have the, some XORG stuff, which are actually just required for the panel to auto hide. Um, the question is here, why is this not upstream? Um, while packaging this for OpenSUSE, I reviewed the packages, and each patch has actually an upstream bug report and was declined for some reason from Genome or from the other projects. As an example, uh, for the GNOME Control Center, uh, there was a patch adding a feature for what to do on lid close. Should it suspend? Should it shut down? And this was declined as a patch for Genome because um, it's, well, too much options for, for GNOME. So, you want any screenshots? Uh, no. Let's show it live, maybe. So, that's Unity for OpenSUSE. So, we can prove it, of course, here we have Yast. And, well, it's actually quite everything working. We have here the, the different lenses. Of course, here I don't have anything in the music collection uh, because that's just a fresh install. So, to test that it's working on a fresh install. We have, of course, the app menu here in the top working for every kind of packages, for the ones using GNOME menu, for Qt packages, and for GTK packages. So, 
So, may you have already noticed that here in the upper corner, uh, it reloads for a second. That's actually, uh, we didn't figure it out yet, some uh, problem with UPower, because it happens only when uh, the laptop is not connected to uh, the power, only when it's on running on battery. So what actually is still not 100% working? Um, we need a workaround for uh, GTK apps to export their app menu. And it must be set with this environment variable each time you run the package. At the moment, we are trying to figure out what's the best practice for OpenSUSE and Fedora to include it into the RPM package and to set it system-wide, like a sysconfig or um, some global exported variable. The other thing you see, the login manager, uh, when, you s when you have the GDM screen popping up, you can choose the session. It already shows the Ubuntu session or Unity session, but when you start it, you get the GNOME shell. Uh, that's because of a custom part of OpenSUSE in GDM, or is, or especially the GNOME session. It handles it a bit differently, not vanilla-like. Vanilla the GNOME session starts actually a file called GNOME, which has a wrapper for if you are running on a live CD, it creates the icon and the favorite for the live installer. And we would have to wrap around it so we could not use um, the GNOME or Unity session from Ubuntu. Like I've mentioned before, UPower and the battery indicator. It's flashing sometimes, each about in 30 seconds, but it's no problem at all. It's a problem when you have, when you try to use the indicators in the GNOME Classic panel, then it's actually crashing the panel. Um, we have the message indicator. It's here quite empty because you need also to package every single chat program which are using the message indicator with some custom Ubuntu patch. And we would require there some help from OpenSUSE or some support to get this into mainstream. So what about the future of this project? Um, we are, of course, trying to get it into factory or rawhide in Fedora. Um, the, the biggest problem here would be for Fedora. For OpenSUSE, it would be quite straightforward uh, because of the use of OBS. We actually do the packages which require pa patches. Um, they conflict with the mainstream packages and have the suffix dash Ubuntu. So you would have in, in, the, in the distry gtk3 and gtk3 dash Ubuntu, and you can choose which one to install. So what else would there be distro best practices? Of course, we packaged it in the GNOME Ayatana on OBS for Fedora and OpenSUSE, and we also enabled a repository for Arch. Maybe that's the, the right time. I didn't mention it in the beginning. Uh, Chiao Long Sen is, the, is another guy working very, very much on this project. He actually was the first one who ported Unity some, to some other distribution. He ported it to Arch Linux. Um, after I found this out, I, wrote, I read on the internet that he is switching to Fedora. So I contacted him and 
He said, yeah, well, let's try to use OBS together. And he wrote already some spec files. I wrote some spec files for OpenSUSE. And now it's working for OpenSUSE and for Fedora. So what about Unity, dash, Unity 2D? It's actually already depreciated by Canonchio for Ubuntu. But it is a very interesting concept using the QML and it's, it does not require LLVM pipe like GNOME Shell or Unity does. What I'm really interested in is uni to get Unity features into other desktop environments like KDE and GNOME fallback panel. We may drop this with the GNOME fallback panel because it's going to be dropped most likely in the next few months. So we will try to get it into KDE. KDE already has the an icon tasks plasmoid and um, window button plasmoid. You also have the up menu running in KDE. What we still re would require is a bit polishing and the the indicators and the dash. Any questions up to here? Okay. Um, we have the software center, which is now was part of the last year's uh, Google Summer of Code. And there was a very big progress, so it may integrate well with newer versions of of our Unity Dash here. Yeah, well, that's it. Um, may, if you have some interest, I can just do a fresh install and show you how to install it. So was this a yes? Thank you for the presentation. We will have a break for a quarter hour. After that, we will have the presentation desktop for education and server for education, a free client and server solution for education. Thank you.